presents Big Ten Conference Basketball. And today's game is being brought to you by MCI. By Gillette. And by AgriCenter. Chrysler Arena in Arbor, Michigan. Today, a crucial game of the Big Ten Conference race as ninth ranked Purdue visits number three, Michigan. Hi, everybody. I'm Wayne Larrabee. Welcome to Big Ten Basketball. This should be a Super Bowl game here today. A quick look at the Big Ten standings. And all you have to do is look at the top two teams because essentially it's down to a two team race. Indiana is losing and has lost today at Ohio State. Michigan and Purdue, a victory by Purdue, gives the Boilermakers an edge going into the final week of the regular season. A pleasure to be joined by Greg Kelser. Greg, this should be outstanding today. It's a huge game because for Michigan, if they win, they've got an excellent chance to win the Big Ten Championship outright. For Purdue, if they win, then you're possibly looking at a co-championship. And Wayne, I guess we should also mention that both of these teams are looking for high seeds in the NCAA tournament. And that's a lot of what's at stake here today. Look at the remaining schedule. After today, Purdue with just one game remaining at home against Illinois. Michigan, two games at home against Penn State on the road at Northwestern. You know, when you see a game like this come up, you see stars rise to the top. There is no greater star in the Big Ten Conference this season than Glenn Robinson of Purdue. He's unbelievable. In fact, the Michigan coaches, they have so much respect for Glenn Robinson, they're already conceding him his 30 points today. They say he's unstoppable. The keeper of Michigan will be to limit the production of Conzo Martin and Matt Waddell. And of course, Jalen Rose for Michigan. He's been super throughout, giving them whatever they need. In fact, in the first game against Purdue, Robinson was having a field day until Rose got on him defensively and was able to cut him off a little bit. Well, it was a one-point ball game the first time these two teams got together in West Lafayette, Michigan winning 63-62. The stakes are higher this time around. At your side. Kessler Arena in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Let's take a look at the MasterCard starting lineups for this afternoon's game between these two top ten teams. We talked to Glenn Robinson, Conzo Martin, Greg mentioned how well he plays can make a big difference. He and Waddell did not reach double figures the first time these two teams played, and Purdue had just 62 points in the game. For Michigan, Jimmy King, Ray Jackson, outstanding combination at the forward spot, and then Jawan Howard in the middle can make all the difference in the world, and you know about Jalen Rose. Two outstanding coaches in this uh, ball game. As you look at your television set, Steve Fisher on the left and Gene Cady on the right have brought their teams to the top of the uh, Big Ten Conference uh, standings. That nice-looking uh, lady behind it, Gene Cady, his wife. They're set to go. Sell-off crowd at Chrysler Arena, Purdue and Michigan. Coming up next on Raycon. For the word from your local station, this is the Raycon Network. Greg? Well, for, for the do, they've got to be ready to help and recover on defense. That is, get help inside when the ball is in, inside for Michigan, and then recover to guard the outside shooters. And Martin and Waddell must have big games. You mentioned they didn't make double figures the first time against Michigan, and Purdue lost. For, for, for Michigan, better shot selection than in Wisconsin. They shot the ball extremely poorly, but a lot of that was due to the shot selection. And then they've got to be able to avoid the periods of inactivity when they get absolutely nothing done on the floor. Purdue in the old gold and black controls the opening tip. Michigan solid gold, blue trim uniforms. Robinson double team right away. Porter Roberts, the point guard. Purdue a bit rattled here in the first possession of the game. All right, look at the respect they're showing for Robinson. Waddell, oh. ring it for three. And that has to be consistent on the day for Purdue to be successful. Waddell taking some of the pressure off Robinson. If he's going to be double teamed, then somebody will be open. Jalen Rose looking to deal. There's Dugan Fife. You notice defensively that Conzo Martin is guarding Jalen Rose, while Brandon Brantley is guarding Jawan Howard on the interior. Rose pops free. Beautiful ball movement by Michigan. They showed patience, and that was a much better first shot to start this game than the other night at Wisconsin when Jalen Rose took a three-pointer seven seconds into the game. Robinson rings it in and out. Conzo Martin the rebound. Purdue on its first trip down the floor was a bit helter-skelter for a moment, but got a good look at a three-point shot, and Waddell buried it. 
nice dish to Brantley, who missed the team. Waddell gets it back. Two offensive rebounds from Purdue. That's a bit surprising. Michigan usually controls their defensive glass, at least of late. Robinson lost his footing. Waddell comes up with it. Purdue's very opportunistic. They're coming away with offensive rebounds and loose balls early on. Robinson in close. That's the thing that I believe makes him so tough. He gets a lot of defensive attention, but he's constantly moving, putting so much pressure on whomever's guarding him. You gotta really have your legs together. Throws, no look pass. Jackson. Well done. Again, good ball movement and people movement by Michigan for the high percentage shot. Gonzo Martin. Robinson for three. Brantley pushed off on the rebound against Jackson and gets called for the foul. First on Brantley, first on the team. Let's take a look at these series records. Boilermakers have the lead. In fact, they play pretty well here at Chrysler Arena. This season, though, Michigan won 63-62. Yeah, that was a game that saw both teams shoot the ball very poorly and great defense. Jimmy King off a gorgeous dish from Jalen Rose. Jalen Rose has been involved in all of Michigan scores. He has a basket and two assists. Everything is going through him right now. He looks completely ready to play this game. Robinson, a four, scored and a foul. My goodness. Talk about hitting a tough shot. It's tough for you, Wayne. It's tough for me. But it's not tough for this guy. He can create his own shot, and he really elevates. Look at this, right over the top of the long arms of Jawan Howard. Got nothing but the bottom of the net that time. And the foul. John Howard picking up his uh, first personal foul. First on the team. Robinson completes the three-point play. They call the foul apparently on Jackson. Robin, Jackson and Howard were there. And Jackson was the man they spied for the foul. Howard down low. Michigan is four for four from the field. And they've scored very quickly. They get right into their offense. They've made solid moves to the basket. And the unselfish pass has resulted in three layups. They're in the early going, Michigan is getting easier shots than Purdue. Waddell was fouled. Foul is on Ray Jackson. Second personal on Jackson. Second on the team. You know, Purdue is really trying a few things off defensively. They're putting a lot of pressure on the ball. They're double teaming. And Michigan, once they break that initial surge of pressure, the penetration has allowed this to happen repeatedly. Three layups so far for Michigan. Matt Waddell makes good on his first. He'll have another. Leading the Boilermakers at assist, second and steals, fourth and rebound. a pair. Purdue by two. King finds Howard. Good move around Brantley. You know, in the game the other night against Wisconsin, Jawan Howard, Howard had trouble getting that shot off. He was closely guarded, and he had to shoot over the top of seven-foot-one Rashard Griffin. Well, there is no seven-foot-one player in the middle for Purdue, and he could have a big day if they can continue to get the ball in the side to him like that. Robinson surrounded. Robinson bats the rebound to Roberts, and finally an easy bucket for Purdue as Brandon Brantley scores down low. If I'm Steve Fisher, I'm just a little bit concerned right now that Purdue is quicker to the basketball. Each time the ball has been loose, they come up with it. Rose, a tough shot in the lane, and Robinson retrieves. First miss of the afternoon for Michigan. Foul coming up against the Wolverines, Jalen Rose. His first in the third on the team. Jalen Rose of the Michigan Wolverines at the moment, looking up at the Purdue Boilermakers, who lead in the early going by two.
And on this particular play, excellent defense that time to contest the shot by Robinson. It looks for a moment that Jackson has that rebound, but it's stripped away in Purdue. Very quick to the basketball. That's been the story early on. Our MCI proof positive replay. Michigan coming off a game in Wisconsin where the Wolverines shot a season low 36%. Look what they've done here today, yet they still trail the Boilermakers who have had more opportunities. Purdue basketball underneath the Boilermaker goal. Matt Waddell watched by Jimmy King. Martin pops open off a screen by Stanbeck. Well, Con Sorry, Conzo Martin has contributed, Waddell has contributed, and as I said before, Michigan putting so much defensive pressure on Glenn Robinson. They will no longer be able to do that if those players get hot. You've got to guard them as well. Robinson for three, ring it up. You know, that time he came down to the trailer on the floor and was unguarded. The man that's guarding him initially before the double come is Jawan Howard. Howard is conditioned as a center to go back under the basket and then find your defensive man. When you're guarding Robinson, you can't do that. Matt Waddell has a breakaway. And Purdue moves on top by 10. They're not intimidated by this crowd. You can see that they're clearly focusing in on Michigan and the game and the game's importance. In other words, Wayne, they, they look ready to play. They are ready. I guess so. Jalen Rose out of the perimeter. This is Jimmy King. Howard comes up high. Picked up by Stanbeck. Robinson controls the rebound and a foul. See that ball movement? Ever since Purdue decided to play honest, going away from the double team on defense, each man has a defensive player on him. The movement that we saw from Michigan and the easy passes that resulted in layups are no longer happening. Tough pass by Juwan Howard. There's that turnover that led to the Purdue break. The easy basket by Waddell. Howard picked up his first personal foul. Four on the Wolverines, who trail here at home by 10. Robinson guarded by Howard out of the perimeter. Link Darner's in the ball game for the first time today for Purdue. So is Herb Dove. Robinson. Oh, and Robinson man. off big. Ten I don't know. point to the early going, Greg. You know, there are a lot of people that say, well, he may be the best player in the country, but then there's also Grant Hill of Duke. There's also Danielle Marshall, Connecticut. I don't think those guys are as good at putting the ball on the floor and getting their own shot, coming up so cleanly with it. King from deep for three. After, and it'll belong to Michigan here as a combination of Herb Dove and Glenn Robinson fight over the ball and lose it out of play. Michigan hit its first five shots. Since then, they have struggled. Those two players should have communicated. One of them should have said, I got it, but you notice Gene Cady applauded. You'll never see a coach get upset when you've got two players going aggressively at the rebound, hustling like that. You want that consistently. Rose. See, where's all the extra passing by Michigan? It's gone. The movement's gone. They're taking tough shots now, playing what? right into Purdue's hands. Is that something that Purdue is forcing defensively? I think they have ever since they saw, they decided to play honest. Right now, no player for Michigan has stepped up to warrant a double team. So you play each guy honestly, make sure everyone's guarded. Justin Jennings in for the first time today. He has the ball for Purdue. Jennings, a great athlete, guarded by Howard right now. Elevates over Enjai. Right now, Gene Cady's team is red hot, leading by 14 here at Michigan. See for Michigan, one pass and a shot. Sure, it's a, it goes down, it's a good shot because he made it, Jimmy King. But they are not getting the movement. They are not getting the high percentage shots that they were enjoying early. A three-point field goal for Jimmy King. Conversely, Purdue has moved the ball well here. They sure have. Great right look Keith. by Jennings to Porter Roberts. Yeah, right on key. They're doing to Michigan what Michigan was doing to them early. They're getting that penetration, and then they're making that one extra pass that's resulting in a layup. And Jai double teamed on the block. Dugan five for three. Long rebound, and here comes Herb Dove on the run as a 39-inch vertical jump, the highest on the Purdue Boilermaker team. 
Overplay by Injai and the foul. Today's Big Ten Conference game is being brought to you in part by MasterCard and by Neon. You know, another thing we'll watch is the fatigue factor. The pace of this game has been pretty quick. But Gene Cady, he's shuttling players in quite regularly here, whereas Michigan, their bench isn't quite as deep, and I don't think Steve Fisher really has the confidence in his bench that, bench that Gene Cady does. Best evidence, the other night against Wisconsin, Michigan got nothing, zero points off their bench. Jimmy King on his own, draws the foul. Herb Dove picks up his first, only the second on Purdue. That's one way that Michigan can get back into this thing. Really turn up their aggressiveness on the defensive end, and thereby forcing their type of tempo and going in transition. That was excellent defense by Michigan. King to the basket hard. May have gotten away with the, with the offhand that time, but Michigan in desperate need of a break. They got it that time. These two teams played the first time around. It was a defensive struggle. Neither team shot 50% from the floor. And we've seen the defense here. Michigan came out very aggressive in the first two minutes. Defensively, of course, a little helter-skelter to Purdue. The Boilers able to survive, and now they have dictated the tempo. And Dugan Fife is back on for Michigan. Jalen Rose heading off, although they're undecided now as to who's going to come off. Apparently, it's going to be Jimmy King. Well, if... The way Purdue is playing right now, if Michigan decided to go with six, you couldn't blame them. You got it. Boilermakers came in here. They felt they were the better team. They felt they were the deeper team. So far, we've seen evidence of that, but we've got a long way to go. Stanback running the floor. Martin for three. Stanback down low. Stanback again. Look at Purdue. That's just hustle. First of all, they're getting too deep a position inside against Michigan. Michigan's not blocking anybody out. Tough shot by Waddell, but was fouled by St. John. Olivier St. John's first foul. Six already on Michigan with 11.39 to go in the first half. Michi look, at, look at Michigan. They're just not putting a body on anybody. When the shot goes up, no one's locating their man to block them out. And Stanback, he's one of the better offensive rebounders in the Big Ten. You've got to put a body on him. And there, look at that. The quickness to the ball. Porter Roberts. <laughs> Matt Waddell at the free throw line. I'm not taking away anything from guys like Waddell and Conzo Martin. But the presence of Robinson, I think, just makes them so much better. They have confidence that perhaps they wouldn't have ordinarily. You got Waddell putting the ball on the floor, trying to make his own offense, and more times coming up with good dividends. Matt Waddell makes good on a pair of free throws. 11.39 left to go, first half. Purdue on the road, leading by 13 at Michigan. From the Chrysler Arena, Ann Arbor, Michigan. Purdue leading by 13 in the first half over the Wolverines. Earlier today, in Columbus, Ohio State, Getting this field goal from Lawrence Funderburg. Came from behind and defeated Indiana 82 to 78. With that victory, Randy Ayers received congratulations from Bob Knight. Take a look at the standings now. Indiana 11 and five, and for all intents and purposes, probably out of the title chase in the Big Ten Conference. And a nice win for Ohio State, a team that has lost a lot of close ball games in the conference this season. You really have to give Randy Ayers credit. He kept his young guys motivated, and you know they're out of any postseason consideration. But still playing hard, they deal Indiana a devastating blow today. You saw the rebounding edge to Purdue, and there's a turnover Michigan. Michigan came out trying to get that movement that they so desperately missed from early in the game, but just mishandled miss the ball. Waddell with a great look to Conzo Martin. Purdue is just on top of its game right now. Supremely confident. I mean, they're going down, they're getting the movement. Very no nonsense in their offense. Every pass is made with purpose, every cut is made with purpose. And they're shooting a very, very high percentage right now. Dugan Fife, Galen Rose, Jawan Howard scored and a foul. Matt 
Waddell commits the foul, his first and the third and the team, and Jawan Howard will head to the line with six points. So this is what Michigan must have on a consistent basis. They get the penetration. That is what was key for them early on. The penetration from Rose and then the extra pass to Howard. He catches it that deep. You're not going to stop it. Now this was Purdue earlier. Again, off the screen, Martin made a great back cut to the basket off of a screen, was wide open, and it was an easy pass from Waddell for the layup. Back tap rebound, Dugan Fife, the touch pass to Ray Jackson, who's double team. King out of the floor. St. Jean. Michigan back to within 11. Now Purdue, they're well aware of Michigan's comeback ability. They know that Michigan's a spurt team. So they must continue to be very serious in their cuts and their moves to the basket here. Robinson, a tough shot out of a double team. St. John the rebound. Michigan picking it up a little bit and it's starting with their defense. Jackson shot halfway down. Robinson fouled in close on the rebound. Olivier St. Jean picks it up. It is his second personal and already 17 fouls. Now Ray Jackson is a He's a 20% three-point shooter on the season. He was wide open, but perhaps for him and the way he's been struggling on the year, maybe not the best shot. Certainly would have been a big shot for Michigan had it gone down, but Glenn Robinson was the last player down for Purdue, picked himself up off the floor, went down, got the defensive rebound, the foul will put him on the free throw line. If you weren't seeing the blue border around the court, you'd wonder who was the home team there. Seven on Michigan, three personal fouls on Purdue. Usually the home team has uh, more, uh, fewer personal fouls called on it, but not the case thus far today. 11 points already for Glenn Robinson. He had the big game in the first matchup between these two teams, 36 points, nine rebounds against Michigan, but he was the only Boilermaker in double figures in that game. You know, to extend on that just a little bit, in three games against Michigan, Glenn Robinson is averaging 32 points a game. But Michigan has won all three games. Well, that's why Brian Dutcher, the assistant coach of Michigan, said, well, we're going to let him have his 30-some points. I think he's going to get them whether, You're right. whether he, they let him have them or not. It's how well it, they do against Waddell and Conzo Martin that will make the difference in this game, as it did in West Lafayette last month. 14 to go on the shot clock. Jackson with eight to go. Dugan five. Sets the offense. Five to go. He goes for three. A oh, brick. Woo. Robinson cleans it up. Under 10 minutes to go, first half. See, Purdue played 30 seconds of solid defense. They were defensively sound and left Michigan with a wild three-pointer as the shot clock was winding down. This is Waddell. Brantley out of the floor. Leon Derricks jumps at him defensively. Porter Roberts guarded by Dugan Fife. Good, solid player, Dugan Fife. Robinson, oh, great look to Brantley. Slapped away, knocked out of bounds. Quick hands down low by the Wolverines. Dugan Fife. It had to be there, or it would have been another layup for Purdue. Look at Robinson. Puts it on the floor. Draws the attention of, a, of several other Michigan Wolverines. The extra pass right there, and then there's Fife. Fife is a good help side defender. Wayne was out the block shot. He comes over and covers for a lot of his teammates. His father camped in the 1970-71 Michigan basketball squad, Dugan Fife. Inbound to Robinson. Eight to go on the shot clock now for Purdue. Look for Purdue to probably start posting Robinson up because he's being guarded now by Ray Jackson, who's getting up about They're not going to get the shot off. That will not count. Credit Michigan in the half court defensively. And Purdue unable to get a shot in time. Under nine minutes to go. First half. Purdue by 13. Michigan's got to get that ball in the hands of Jalen Rose. He's just not getting enough touches. Remember early on, the ball was going through him, and they were getting good dividends. Now, he's away from the ball. He's not seeing it very often. And with the inexperienced players like Derrick, who's about to go out of the game, or no, Derrick stays. And Jackson Ray Jackson goes leaves, yeah. I think you've got to get the ball at least in the hands of Jalen Rose at least two or three times 
uh, in a row down the floor. Justin Jennings is back on for Purdue. And Matt Waddell gets a break. Rose forces contact, gets it, and the foul. Yes, and it'll count. He's been giving them what they need all season. So why go away from it right now? Look at this. He sets a good screen, does Rose, and then turns to the basketball, makes himself available, kisses it off the glass down. That's a much-needed three-point opportunity for Michigan. First foul on Porter Roberts. That is the fourth on the team, and Jalen Rose, who has four points here today, looking for his fifth. Earlier today, Ohio State playing at home, upset Indiana. Fifth loss of the season in conference play for the Hoosiers. Five points for Jalen Rose. Michigan, 10 down. This is Robinson. What a first half he's had, 12 points already. This is a big possession for Purdue because they can extend their lead back well above 10 with the basket. If they don't... Jennings over the back. Foul on Justin Jennings is his first, fifth on the team. The point I was about to make, Michigan now with an opportunity to get this deficit back in single digits. This crowd will go crazy if they're successful, which will further energize Michigan. Hanzo Martin, number 22, back on for the Boilermakers. Link Darner leaves. Boy, this has been a, a well-prepared Purdue team. They have been impressive here in this first half. Steve Fisher's Wolverines admitted to a little staleness. They had not played in eight, game, eight days prior to their performance at Wisconsin on Wednesday. A whistle down low here. That's going to be on Brandon Brantley. Brantley. Off the ball, holding as the Michigan player was cutting through. Look right there, he's grabbing on to the arm of Juwan Howard. Second on Brantley, six on the team now. Oh, he's got a good grip of Howard. Game is being held up. They're trying to correct the scoreboard here. We've got a problem on the scoreboard. Scoreboard is incorrect. Well, it must have been incorrect for quite a while if the score is the problem because it was 32-19. Purdue should have 31 instead of 32 points is what they're trying to clear up, I believe. Okay. Because they've been sitting on 32 for quite some while. No, they still have 32 racked up there. Michigan has 22. In close, Jawan Howard. He's a post player supreme. Almost a spectacular play to Jennings. Dugan Fife runs the break. Jawan Howard, Jalen Rose had it blocked. And a foul down low. See, now it's as loud as it's been in here. Michigan has the deficit down to eight. They look further energized. And they've got the momentum now. They've got the confidence that Purdue had earlier. Jazz barely missing that lob that time, but right away, Michigan in transition. Here's the extra passing, a couple of extra passes, and Rose again getting the opportunity. Jalen at the free throw line. Easy going in, man. Jalen Rose was against Glenn Robinson, his first, and the team over the limit. Gene Cady not happy with that last call. Justin Jennings leaves. Jalen's at the free throw line. Purdue was up by the 13. We talked about Michigan being able to come back. Well, in the first game, they erased an 11-point Purdue lead in the second half to win. So Purdue knows they must stay focused in this game. Seven points for Jalen Rose. Gene Cady and company leading by seven at Michigan. Beautify your home with Glidden. Travel arranged through Northwest Airlines, introducing the comfort, choice, and control of world business only from global partner KLM and Northwest. Be sure to join us at halftime when we update uh, the Big Ten Conference women's basketball on the Volkswagen halftime report. They've had a problem here with the scoreboard, and now they've got it reset. The score is Purdue 32, Michigan 26. They kept losing a point, I believe, on a three-point field goal by uh, Gonzo Martin, and uh, they had also lost a point for Michigan, but apparently have it set up and straight now. So the lead is six now for Purdue instead of seven. And, of course, in our truck, Greg Kelser, the crack crew, 
led by Michael Vetter, has been on it all afternoon. They've had the right score. Yeah, they don't get caught up in the action. Everyone in here is hard not to. This has been a, a terrific game, and it's been back and forth so far. Michigan has done better in close. Much of that came early. Purdue on the attack, leading by six. You know, while Purdue has been stale offensively, their big guy hasn't been getting a lot of touches. Glenn Robinson, this time coming out of the huddle, they make sure they give it to him. He gets the nice assist down low to Ian Stanback, and now Purdue has a chance for a three-point opportunity. Good feed sets this up to Stanback. That's right. And Leon Derricks commits the foul. See, I believe for Michigan to stay consistent on the offensive end, they got to make sure that Rose and Howard are busy. For Purdue, they must make sure that Mr. Robinson is touching that ball every time down in the half-court set. Stanback puts in on the three-point play. Purdue's lead back to nine. Jalen Rose deals baseline. Nine for Jalen. He thought about the three, saw the opening wisely, put it on the floor. He's getting good results when he goes hard to the basket. Seven points the lead for Purdue. Robinson for three. Hey, how can he be that unguarded floating out on the perimeter? That's where he's very strong. This is an inside-outside guy. you got to keep a man on him all the time. Two men. Yeah, put two on him. Yeah. Stay off. Stay off. Rose. Let's go. King with a little scoop shot. Robinson retrieves. Look at him run the floor. What a weapon. But he gives it up that time because he got a little bit fancy with his dribble. Good job by Michigan getting back. Dugan Fife, Jackson. Rose for three. Robinson, another rebound. The lead is 10 for Purdue, and we're coming up on six minutes left to go, first half. Roberts. Robinson on the block this time. You know, Michigan's doing a better job of, re of rebounding defensively and putting bodies on people. And they're keeping Michigan, uh, Purdue, that is, off the glass, limiting them to one shot here lately, and that's been key. Coming up on five and a half minutes to go in this first half. Joan Howard out on the floor. Purdue still quickest to the ball in the person of Ian Stanbeck. Martin lines up a tray. Robinson. Straight. That's what got that shot down for him. Because he was covered very well after he got the offensive rebound by Howard, but he just strong-armed it up. This has been an impressive Purdue Boilermaker team here today. On the reverse, beautiful move, Ray Jackson. That's what Ray Jackson can do. As opposed to settling for the three, drive it to the basket. He can hang in the air, he's acrobatic, and he can get some things going, going to the hoop. Roberts over Jackson. I don't think I mentioned Porter Roberts' name because you, when you watch Purdue, you're so inclined to talk about Robinson, Waddell, and Martin. But Roberts certainly has not hurt Purdue all season long. He's very valuable as a support player. Jawan Howard with that patented little hook shot down low now has 10. 10-point ball game in favor of Purdue. Robinson was held by Rose. Now, one of the switches they made down at West Lafayette was switch Jalen Rose on to Glenn Robinson, and it did slow him down in the second half. He had a big first half, did Glenn Robinson in that game. Rose played him well in the second half. They've done it earlier here today, switching Juwan Howard from Glenn Robinson and moving Jalen Rose on to the Purdue star. Well, I was a little bit surprised when Michigan opened the game with Howard guarding Robinson because you just don't want to take Robinson, or excuse me, Howard that far from the Michigan basket. And Robinson plays all over the floor. So I knew it was a matchup that would have to be addressed sooner or later. Take a look at the last bucket here by Juwan Howard, that little baby hook at the baseline. Oh, he catches it deep like that. He's going to turn with those long arms and just drop it in. 
Keep him busy. One shot. Glenn Robinson with 18 points. I was a little surprised when I got here this morning and uh, Brian Dutcher told me that they would start Jawan Howard and Glenn Robinson because we've seen Robinson so often his game starts at the arc and it gets closer to the basket as the game wears on. 19 for Glenn Robinson along with seven rebounds. And number 33, Justin Jennings back into the Purdue lineup. Still a 12-point lead for the Boilermakers. Hey, Kenny Williams into the lineup right now. He's got five fouls to give. He's going to guard Juwan Howard, try and get a little physical with him in that post area. And he's doing it right now. King, bring it up for three. commercials where they tell you to jaunt off to something yeah, yeah. I'm waiting for you to post the score I'm not gonna say it anymore I'm not gonna trust the scoreboard here okay what's Purdue's biggest lead man? 15 After a slow start, Purdue moved out to a 15-point lead. Michigan is back to within six with three and a half to go in this first half. Time now for the MCI. Proof positive replay. Well, this was that play that showed the strength of Glenn Robinson as he rebounded the Conzo Martin. Missed and then put it back up. So I'm sorry, actually, that was his three-pointer. But here's the two-pointer we were talking about. It really shows his strength. Gets it hard off the glass, goes up despite mm. all the defensive resistance and gets the roll. Our MCI proof positive replay, the strength of Glenn Robinson. Purdue leading and with the ball. Herb Dove, Robinson out of the floor. Robinson draws a double team and dribbles out of it. Ten to go on the shot clock, Waddell. Wolverines had it surrounded, Jawan Howard. Here's Ray Jackson. Score it. Score the field goal and a foul. Can I say Ray Jackson can take it to the basket? Yes, he can. Keeping the head up. The little hesitation gets him inside, drawing that contact. I think he's realized within the course of this first half what he can and cannot do. Forget the three-pointer, Ray. You're 20% from out there. But take it to the basket, and your percentage goes way up. Look at Gene Cady. says, no way on that foul. But yes, there is a way. Conzo Martin gets his first. Ninth on the team. Ray Jackson at the line. Both Phil Bova and Dan Crispin were in the process of calling that foul. Two-thirds of the arbitration crew on hand for today's game. This time a touch foul out front by Olivier St. Jean of Michigan, his third, and that puts uh, Purdue into the uh, super bonus. 
And it really hurts Steve Fisher's rotation because St. John is one of the players that Steve has a little confidence in off that bench. And you know with the pace of this game later on, fatigue could become something, something to consider. And if Michigan, if Steve Fisher can't go into that bench with confidence, then you're going to call for your starters to have to play long minutes, even though they may be a little winded out on the floor. And again, we mentioned, and this is important in a game like this, where Steve Fisher's rotation may be eight, stretching to nine players, Gene Cady's regular rotation is basically 10 players. And that extra player or two may not sound like much on paper, but it makes a big difference in the second half of a, a game like this. That was Purdue's first Whoa. miss in the free throw line, and Dove missed the Whoa. second one even worse. I'm surprised they don't take that out on the side because he didn't get any rim. That was a that was an air ball brick. <laughs> yeah. You need a union card to make a shot like that. Oh, man. On your hand. Dugan Fife. Well, maybe that tells me that the pressure and intensity of this activity right now maybe got the Herb Dub a little bit on that. Shot clock under 10. Oh, beautiful feed, Rose to Howard. Sensational. Rose is doing so many things on the floor right now for Michigan without scoring. 15 to four on Michigan. They're down by one. The steal by Jackson and the foul by Ian Stanback. They're turned on. This usually somewhat stoic, laid-back crowd of Michigan, hey, they're into this action. You got to get excited about that. That's terrific basketball. I tell you what, Jalen Howard, they're both fired up. Yes, sir. Steve Fisher's team has battled back from 15 down. They can tie here. They can still tie. Again, both teams are over or are into the super bonus over the double foul limit of 10 fouls. You know, as you have watched Michigan over the last couple of years, three years, starting with when they got the Fab Five in here, it's remarkable how this team can fall down by double digit deficits and still always, almost always get back into it. It just doesn't bother them when they're down. Tremendous firepower and great versatility in their players. They can do so much on both ends of the floor. Robinson for three. Jawan Howard got a hand in his face. Good rebound by Jimmy King. He had to tightrope the baseline there to pull that down on his tiptoes. Michigan can take the lead on this possession. How about another two-man game between Howard and Rose? It worked last time. King. Michigan leads. Jimmy King had a better idea. He feels he can take his man off the dribble. First lead of the game for the Wolverines. Robinson goes to work. Scored and a foul. Oh, man. The great ones love these situations. See, he's not just playing Michigan right now. He's playing the 14 or 15,000 people in here because they're all up. Now he says, I'm going to be the answer man. Take that and sit down, all of you. Joan Howard gets called for a second personal. Look at this, he just backs in. Howard trying to defend without the foul, elevates the long arms, the soft touch along the baseline. He shot that on everyone in the arena. Take a look what he's done today. That almost mirrors his first half performance. In fact, the 22 points matches his 22 points in the first half back on February 1st. Our double team quickly. Derricks is open. Wow, Leon Derricks. He looked very comfortable and confident with that shot. Excellent pass by Jawan Howard out of the post when he was doubled. Under a minute to go, first half, and what a first half it has been. Robinson finds Porter Roberts around Dugan Fife. The extra pass stand back. Another one this time too many. Fife to King. That's not a good shot. I think Jimmy got caught up in the emotion that time. Conzo Martin goes in on Jawan Howard. Smart play. You've got to go at him hard because Howard has the two fouls. You know he's not going to try to pick up that third one here. Jawan, in the end, did not challenge. And that was smart basketball on his part. Both ways, yes. Not to pick up his third personal in the final seconds of the first half. Time winding down to this first half now. 
There it is in the right hand corner of your screen. No shot clock. Time to work. Crowd barking it out for the Wolverines. Going to be a tough shot. Jawan Howard, no. As the first half comes to a close. Standing ovation for both teams. Purdue heads off at halftime with a two-point lead over Jawan Howard and the Michigan Wolverines at Chrysler Arena in Ann Arbor. Big Ten Conference basketball is being brought to you by CarQuest. By Menards. And by Sears Craftsman. For Chrysler Arena in Ann Arbor, Michigan, third-ranked Michigan, playing host to the Purdue Boilermakers, back with our halftime activities and Wolverines. Ray Jackson out front. Jackson and King on the wings. Jalen Rose with Fife in the backcourt, and of course, Juwan Howard in the middle. Purdue with, with its starting lineup. Jalen Rose on the back this time is fouled by Porter Roberts. That's a tough assignment. We'll make that Conzo Martin guilty of the foul. Second on Conzo Martin, first on the team. Porter Roberts, Matt Waddell, the backcourt, Conzo Martin, Robinson, the forwards, and Brantley in the middle for Purdue to start the second half. Tough shot, Jalen Rose. Jimmy King is there, was tied up in a foul. Foul is on Matt Waddell, and it is his third personal. Second on the team. So a couple of quick fouls on Purdue here, the opening minute of play, second half. Remember the halftime rebounding advantage. It was plus eight for Purdue. But coming out very quickly, asserting themselves on the offensive glass, Michigan, Jimmy King getting inside. He's a very athletic player. And it's players like Jackson and King that really helped Jawan Howard on that glass. The athletic ability of those guys allowed them to jump over much taller players, especially when not blocked out. Second upcoming for Jimmy King. King now with 13 points. Gene Cady looking down the Purdue bench. He's got some people in foul trouble now. Namely Matt Waddell with three. Notice out on the floor, Howard going against Robinson. He's being pulled far away from that basket. And keep in mind, Howard has the two fouls himself. Not really a factor right now, but if he picks that third one up early, it becomes a huge factor. Roberts at the point. That pass was intended for Glenn Robinson, who did not react to it. No, that pass was intended for official Phil Vova, okay. who got out of the way of it. <laughs> Phil did the smart thing, right? <laughs> he certainly did. I wonder if for a moment he was tempted to jack it up for three. King to Howard. King for three. Offensive rebound, Dugan Fife. Good find, Ray Jackson. Michigan again on that offensive glass, getting the second opportunities. Obviously something Steve Fisher must have talked about. If you go to the glass on the offensive end, you're going to get some second chance opportunities, but you've got to go consistently. Michigan by two now. Purdue yet to score here at the outset of the second half. Robinson. It's going to belong to Purdue. Don't forget, coming up on many of these Raycom stations next week, the Michigan Wolverines and the Northwestern Wildcats on Saturday. And take a look at this. Uh, a doubleheader either Illinois at Purdue or Wisconsin at Indiana. Something to, something to consider for Purdue. If Glenn Robinson has to start forcing shots, then they're not going to have a very good chance here. He shot 13 of 29 in the first game. Many of those misses came in the second half when Michigan altered their defensive strategy on him. You notice his first shot here in this half was a bit of a force. The turnover by Matt Waddell gives Michigan a chance to build its two-point lead. Jackson playing so much smarter. Howard. Jackson was standing wide open, 17 feet from the basket, but he didn't take the shot. Gene Cady upset with his team at the moment. He should be. They're slow afoot right now. They don't look to be as confident as they were early on. Double team on Robinson. 
finds Brantley in close, and he missed the close shot. Brantley again, tougher shot he makes oh, it this time. Man, he wanted the degree of difficulty points. Yeah. Forget that easy layup. I'm going <laughs> to shoot it up over the outstretched arms of Juwan Howard. He's a week late on the uh, Olympics. Look at Ray Jackson, his second for the field in this second half. He has 14 in the game. Robinson draws an immediate double team. No, got a push. Ooh, ooh, that was a big, big decision right there by the official. That foul is on Jawan Howard. It is his third. That's right. That third came early. Now it is a factor. Now Michigan, Michigan wanted to travel here. Look, Robinson catches, takes a little bunny hop in there, a little extra step. Yeah, 15, 16,000 people saying traveling, but the officials say no, that's a push. That was impetus for that travel. Weathermaker struggling in the outset of the second half. Michigan's lead is four, Robinson for three. Robinson's missed his first two offerings of the second half. And he's hurrying his shots a little bit. He doesn't look to be as patient. He has to be careful and not try to do too much. That could hurt Purdue. Double team on Howard. Good pass. Jackson with authority. Michigan's movement off the ball is tremendous right now. Stand back outside connecting. Ooh, he usually hits his shots in closer, Greg. I was about to say, that was option five. <laughs> You're right. And that was option five coming up very quickly on that possession. Yeah. Rose for three. No need to do that. Jackson pushed off. And Jalen usually, usually makes sound decisions. He's a much more mature player this year, but no need to do that. That was a three-pointer early on the shot clock, a little fade to it. And you've been getting good movement. Why go to the three-pointer at that particular time? Third personal on Ray Jackson. So now Jawan Howard, Ray Jackson, Olivier St. John all have three personal fouls for Michigan. Two team fouls on the Wolverines here in the second half. Waddell cranks for three. Porter Roberts over the back on the foul. Dugan Fife, who is, and you look at the reaction of Gene Cady, that says it all. Dugan Fife seems to always be in the right spot. That time, Porter Roberts over the back, his second personal third of the team. Fife at good position on the board. Yeah, he's one of those guys, he's just not, he's not spectacular. He's not going to give you anything that's going to make the highlight real, but his contributions, the little things, mean so much to this Michigan effort. Oh, Rose, beautiful feed to Ray Jackson, who is lighting it up here in the second half. Eight second half points, 18 of the game. He's lighting it up, Ray Jackson is, because he's moving without the basketball and making himself available. And that decision by Rose, much better than the one before that, where he took the fadeaway three. But Ray Jackson picks up a personal foul, his fourth, third on the team. 15.43 left to go in the game. Michigan's lead is six. We'll be back after this word from Miller, Genuine Draft. Podcaster or the use of this telecast without the express prior written consent of the Big Ten Conference is prohibited. Take the Gillette three-point challenge. Clip the coupon in your Sunday, March 13th newspaper. Go to a participating retailer to see if you've won a shot at $1 million. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited. Michigan playing on the lead here in the early going of the second half. Robinson lost the handle on it on the way up. I think the bottom of the backboard got a piece of that, but he was right. forced so far underneath. Jalen lost that on his own. Porter Roberts was there, but Rose tried to switch hands quickly on the dribble. Hey, the string broke. He had it on a yo-yo string. <laughs> I hate when that happens, don't you? I, oh, every time. <laughs> Can't stand it. Waddell. Here's Porter Roberts. Got the lane, got the lane. Got a foul coming up away from the ball. Gonna be a Duke in fight. His first, but fourth on the Michigan Wolverines here. We are almost five minutes into the second half. Michigan is leading by its biggest margin of the afternoon, six points. Remember, Purdue led by 15 about midway through first half. Robinson, 
yet to be heard from in the second half. Waddell on the fade. And the tip down low by Stanback. Well, Stanback again. He's really helping Purdue. Keep in mind, he hit the jumper a little while ago. That time gets the tip. Gordon okay. Roberts misdirects the interior feed, and Robinson is fouled by St. John, and that'll be his fourth. Yeah, they're trying to get the Robinson in transition, but going back to Stanback, where would they be without him right now? <laughs> He's come up with a couple of big baskets here late. Apparently, they call the foul on Jimmy King. Be the first on King. St. John remains with three personal fouls. 0 for 4 from the field in this half by Glenn Robinson. Robinson double teamed by Dugan Fife and Jalen Rose. Martin at the arc. Bring it up for three. That's 67 three pointers on the year for Conzo Martin, who was over seven his first two years. He has really made tremendous improvement in that area, the outside shot. Howard in close, usually hits that. Stand back the rebound. Here comes Porter Roberts. Two talented, experienced basketball teams. They do not lose their poise. Roberts inside, stepped in the baseline, ran out of real estate. Well, just as Michigan came back from the huge deficit, Purdue is hanging in here right now against a home team that's fully enthusiastic and energized from their crowd. We should have expected both of these occurrences. But, I, you know, you look at Michigan, their biggest lead was six. Couple that with a 13-point deficit they erased, and you're talking about a 19-point turnaround, and that's huge in a game like this. Waddell leaves, and back on is Link Darner. Phil Bova and Steve Wilmer talking about the scoreboard again. Hey, fellas, just defer to us. We have it right. I think we had it right the first time. I believe that foul out on the floor a few moments ago was on Olivier St. John and not on Jimmy King, although the scoreboard and the scores table marked it for Jimmy King. That's what this discussion is about right now. And I, they've apparently given it to Jimmy King and they're going to leave it at Jimmy King. The last Michigan personal foul on number 20, Olivia St. John, has been changed to number 24, Jimmy King. Jimmy King is the man they're going to call on the foul, not St. John. So we weren't right the first time. <laughs> we were as wrong as the uh, scorer's table. Rose ducking in under. Howard, Michigan another shot at it. Three offensive rebounds and St. John converts. Gene Cady very upset his team permitted that. Well, just as Michigan wasn't blocking out and putting bodies on people in the first half, it's Purdue. Must be something with that end of the floor. Three for Glenn Robinson, his first field goal of the second half. Well, you've, you've had Robinson struggling if you're Michigan throughout this half because you've kept people right in his face. Well, you don't go away from it. That time, someone was lost. He floated out into the three-point area, and he got the wide open shot. You give him the open shot, he's going to get a rhythm going again, and he's going to be very hard to defend at that point. Ian Stanbeck, second personal foul, fourth on the team. Michigan has five team fouls. Purdue makes another change. Herb Dove reports back on, and let's see who he gets. I believe he's going to get Conzo Martin, yep. So now Herb Dove will be guarding Jalen Rose. Michigan basketball. Once again, at stake here, Michigan trying to get a, a sole outright Big Ten championship. They win this with two games re remaining against Penn State and Northwestern. They look pretty good. Purdue looking for at least a tie. They need this win, however. Bad shot by Jalen Rose, and when Link Darner grabbed the ball, he was tight roping the uh, baseline, a matter of fact, straddling it. So Steve Wellmer makes the quick call. It's Michigan basketball. Rose missed that shot bad. And now the shot clock did reset, and it should not have because it was an air ball. Now the officials converse once again. Boy, we've had a lot of, uh, what would you call, housekeeping type uh, Endeavors to clean up here this afternoon. The scoreboard wrong a couple of times. The officials either not being clear enough on their signals, demonstrative enough on their signals to the scores table, have had to recheck calls. Number 42. I'm just glad you got a late flight out of here. You can withstand all this stoppage. <laughs> if you had one right after the game, you'd be in trouble, buddy. Yeah. 
you're right. Be walking home. The inbounds to Dugan fight for three. Dugan Fife came off of a multiple screen there. Hard to tell who was guarding him because when he came off, he was wide open. He was so time. wide open. You're yes. right. There was no one in his area go. Three-point lead, Michigan. Glenn Robinson. He can see right over the top of the defense and make those cross-court passes. Bullet feed from Porter Roberts trying to hit Link Darner at the baseline off the mark. Sometimes you take too tough a route and it, the ball turns over on you. And that was the case there. Roberts leaves and Conzo Martin quickly up off the bench. Almost eight minutes gone by. Second half. Michigan's lead is three. Their biggest was six. The biggest lead for Purdue, 15. Here's Jalen Rose. St. Jean left unattended for three. I'm a little surprised he made that because he shot it as an afterthought. When he caught it, he was open, thought about it, then shot it. He had the better idea that time because he got nothing but net. Martin trying to answer. Herb Dub up high. Martin again for three. Ring it. Hey, that's talking. That's confidence. You don't get discouraged. You just take another shot. Rose from NBA range. Link Darner sparked play off Dugan Fife, and it will be Purdue ball when we resume. 11.42 to go for the game. Michigan's lead is three. Without knowing. Arena Ann Arbor, Michigan, leading Purdue by three. Hey, a reminder, the Great Eight, a two-day tournament matching this year's NCAA Final Eight is coming to the Palace of Auburn Hills on November 29th and 30th. Tickets range from $39 to $99 and will be distributed through a national lottery due to the expected high demand. To enter the lottery, send a postcard to this address or for further ticket information, call 810-377-0100. Purdue basketball. Watermakers have taken some pretty good shots from Michigan in the early going of the second half. They trail by just three after leading by two at halftime. Yeah, this fight's in the 11th round, going 15, and it's about even. Link Darner with a hand in the face. Darner for two. Michigan by one. Look at Darner play that tough defense. Rose has to come out for it. It's by Conzo Martin. Offensive foul. Steve Wilmer with the call to the baseline and left no doubt about it. Well, here's Rose. Now, usually at this point, he pulls up. And I'm not so sure that that was the correct call. Steve, obviously, Steve Wilmer, a veteran official in this game. Thought that the player for Purdue was set, but it looked to be a little bit of movement that time. But the officials are doing a pretty good job there. At least they're taking their time conferring and trying to get most calls right, especially as it pertains to the clock and, the, and that sort the of situation. Ball got a foul on St. John. That is his fourth personal foul. Steve Fisher foul. has to make a change. Yeah, and he's going to bring Ray Jackson, who also has four fouls back in. Fouls becoming a prime consideration for Michigan. Seventh team foul on Michigan as St. John leaves with his fourth. He has four, Jackson four, Jawan Howard three. Purdue hit 11 of 13 from the free throw line in the first half. Their first free throw offerings are coming up now from Conzo Martin. Front end, one and one. Brandon Brantley over the back of the foul. Bradley's third personal. Boy, both coaches. The game wearing on both Gene Cady of Purdue and Steve Fisher of Michigan. You hear coaches all the time say, I really enjoy it. I love coaching. It's fun. And then you look at those type of expressions and you say, if, if that's fun, I don't want any part of that. Well, fun is many things, Greg. You're right. You and I could not take that kind of pressure. <laughs> There's enough pressure right here. Right here, yeah. Mike Better, our producer, in our ear. <laughs> King on the weave to Howard. Good luck, interior feed. Rose and a foul. Yes, and it counts. 
Oh, just a beautiful feed from two players who've worked together for the last three years. See, that's the one thing that Purdue has been unable to handle most of the day. The cutting and slashing to the basket. Michigan with the short pass. Rose with the good hands, contact, and off the glass. We saw Jackson get a number of these early in this half. Now Rose cutting to the basket. Howard, a superb passer from the post. Also in for the Warriors, number 11, One shot, man, make sure. Foul is on Glenn Robinson, his second. Six on the team, and Jalen Rose to the line. Let's go back to our keys. We talked about a better job of recovering if you're Purdue. Again, the help was there. They cut off Howard's trip to the basket, but unable to recover to get back and properly defend Rose. He gets the three-point opportunity and completes it. 12 for Jalen Rose. Michigan by four. Martin sets up for three. Jackson couldn't get there in time, and Conzo Martin has his third tray of the half. Hey, how you like the ebb and flow of this game? It's back and forth. Jawan Howard does some business in the lane. 16 for Howard. And a foul coming up here on Dugan Fife. You know, if you can force Jawan Howard to catch at the foul line and shoot at the foul line, you're probably looking at him making four out of 10, five out of 10. But if you allow him to put it on the floor and get into the middle of that paint area, he's going to be seven out of 10 on you. Matt Waddell heads to the free throw line. Waddell, nine points. All of them early in the first half of play. Excellent free throw shooter and normally missed the front end of the one and one. Purdue missing some opportunities at the line. They're 0 for 2 from the free throw line. Both of those were one and one opportunities. That's right. So that's like 0 for 4. Yeah, and it really is. It, and you got it coming from Waddell and Martin, two players we said must have good games for Purdue. Quick hands by Matt Waddell there to knock it away from Dugan Fife. It'll be Michigan ball, 22 on the shot clock. Michigan's lead is three. Good feed to Jawan Howard. Jalen Rose with the setup, and Howard has 18. Robinson. Offensive. His third. The correct call. Excellent call that time by Steve Wellman. Robinson had his head down. He could only see the man that was guarding him. He couldn't see the help side defense, and that's who got the charge, the help side defender. Last basket by Michigan. Oh, perfect pass by Rose. One stand back gamble. It was just a turn and flush for Howard. Nonetheless, that's got to be a perfect interior feed or the defender gets away with it. That's right. Jackson. Dugan fight. Michigan gunning for their biggest lead of the game, which would be seven. Howard, great hands. Tough catch. And Jawan Howard with a great adjustment off the glass. Biggest lead for Michigan, as Greg mentioned, seven points. Martin, tough shot. Real tough shot. Man, way down over there. the back. He was effectively blocked out that time by Dugan Fife. Had to go over the back. Now Waddell has four fouls. Eight team fouls on Purdue. And Purdue must rediscover Robinson. He's just not getting the touches. Give Michigan credit. They're following him all over the floor. They're taking him away from the offense. But Purdue has to find a way to get him the basketball. Dugan Fife. Just three points here today. But I dare say he's played a pretty good floor game overall. He usually does. He's one of those guys. He understands his role on this team. He knows he's not going to be a big scorer. But they don't need him to score. They need him to do the things that he does. And that's hustle all over the floor and just make it tough on the opposing team, especially when they're on offense, coming over helping out. Purdue is trailing by seven. Martin gets baseline on Jackson. Offensive foul, Conzo Martin. Dugan Fife had position. Take a look at why this game is so important. 
This includes Indiana's loss at Ohio State today. But these two teams, if Purdue wins, they get the advantage going into the final week of the standings. It really, for all intents and purposes, is down to a two-horse race in the Big Ten for the championship and perhaps a number one seed in the upcoming NCAA tournament. Michigan clinches at least a tie with a win. And with their remaining schedule being very favorable, they pretty much will get their outright championship. It'll be their first since 1986. Dugan Fife makes good on his first. Four points for Fife, who was a quarterback, an outstanding quarterback in high school, and was recruited by the Michigan football program for quarterback or defensive back. And as I mentioned, his father played basketball here in Michigan and captain the squad of, of 1971. Five for Dugan Fife, drops in a pair of free throws. Ray Jackson leads to a rousing round of applause. Eight points in the early going of the second half for Jackson got Michigan out in good form. Purdue must do something now. They're trailing by nine points. It's time for them to start making a consistent effort here on the offensive end. They got to find number 13. Hey, fellas, he's one of the best players in the country, if not the best. Get him the basketball. Jawan Howard picks up the foul. No, hang on. St. Jean gets called for the foul. He came over, and that's his fifth personal foul. So Olivier St. Jean comes in quickly and picks up his fifth personal foul and leaves with 8.23 remaining. Let's see if we can pick it up. It's well off the ball, right there, on the ball, actually. Both teams are in danger of getting into the uh, super status in terms of fouls. Both teams with nine fouls, and St. John is heading to the bench for today, finishes with seven points. The super bonus is when a team gets 10 or more team fouls, and that gives the opposition two shots every time. One and one for Martin. Purdue had missed its first two free throws of the second half till Martin made that one. Gene Cady's team is down by eight. Boy, they played so well throughout much of the first half. 18 for Conzo Martin. Purdue is coming off a big win over a very good Minnesota team playing its best basketball of the season. Power down low. The bank you. remains open on Sunday in Ann Arbor. Whoa. And Howard, I mean, Ian Stanback is playing him very physical down low. Martin tries to answer for three. Ooh. Quick answer from Martin. But again, I'm so impressed with Howard underneath. He's asking for it, he's making himself open, and he's getting it and delivering inside. Howard moves to the low block. Jackson nearly double dribbled there. Dugan Fife. Maybe not expecting it. 13 to go on the shot clock. Jalen Rose, Jackson for three. And it halfway down. Glenn Robinson, a big rebound for Purdue. Blink Darner. He has a shot all game. That was his first shot. And it came amid intense pressure. I'm not surprised he shot it short. 7.20 to go for the game. Michigan's lead is six over Gene Cady and Purdue. Now here's a word from our friends at Schick. Three. Michigan leading by six, 7.20 left to go. Here's today's Schick game summary. Robinson a big first half. Not much so far, just a three-point field goal to the second half. Conzo Martin, however, has picked it up. He has four three-point field goals in the second half alone. Michigan scoring big down low with good ball movement. And five turnovers by the Michigan Wolverines. Our Schick game summary. Michigan leading the Big Ten by a half game over Purdue. Wolverines with the ball on the six-point lead. Coming up on seven minutes left to go for the contest. Thinking about that five turnover stat for Michigan, that's huge in a game that has been this big. And at times, very, very quick, the pace that is, to only turn it over five times is more than commendable. Purdue appears to be in his own defense. Looks like a 2-3. Shot clock winding down. Rose over the top of the zone. Stanbeck is there. Purdue does not play a lot of zone defense. Roberts. Robinson.
Robinson. Herb Dove. Michigan has kept the Purdue offense on the perimeter for the most part today. Tough shot by Robinson. Herb Dove triggered it loose, not get out of bounds. Right now, you know Gene Cady would love to get Matt Waddell back into the game. He's the one other player that can take some pressure off Robinson, especially with his outside shooting ability. Right now, they got Link Darner on the floor, who's not a very good shooter, right around 30% on the season. And spelling time for Waddell. And he's really not an offensive option. I think you need one at that position. Kane for three. Chased down by Jackson. You mentioned Purdue in the first half was quickest to the ball. Michigan has held that distinction in the second half. Howard on the turn, scored and a foul. Conzo Martin picks up the foul. It is his fourth personal. Ten on the team, and Jawan Howard looking for a three-point play. Well, Gene Cady can wait no longer. Again, Howard has been sensational all afternoon. Look at this, in the post area. Gene Cady can wait no longer. He's going to bring Waddell in. Link Garner goes to the bench. You've got two players on the floor now for Purdue with four fouls. Martin and Waddell. Juwan Howard, six of eight from the field in this second half. Now with 25 points in the game. Herb Dove reports on. They've got to take Conzo Martin out and save him for the stretch. Although the stretch is fast approaching. We're on the far turn right now. 6.03 left to go in the game. Michigan's lead back up to nine. Nearly a dribbling violation there by Porter Roberts. Bill Bova was right on the call. Roberts kept his hand on top of the ball. Robinson in traffic trying to create. Does draw a foul. Leon Derricks, his second personal. Both teams in the super bonus. Two shots coming up every time they go to the free throw line. Gene Cady instructing his team on what he wants. Steve Fisher. As Dugan Fife coming back for further instruction. Leon Derricks leaves. And Ray Jackson is back on. Thanks, Robinson. Steve. I think Steve Fisher likes the attitude of his team today a lot better than he did the other day in Wisconsin where maybe they took the badges just a little bit lightly. Maybe they were suffering from the long layoff, but they never got into a flow, says Fisher. Today, they've had a pretty good flow. They've had good continuity on both ends of the floor. And right now, they, they're in very much control here. Seven-point lead, Michigan. Jalen Rose sets it up. Five and a half minutes to go. Rose on the fade. Jackson the rebound. For Jackson, I think that's at least his third or fourth offensive rebound in this half. Ray Jackson was almost non-existent in the first half. He heard Steve Fisher and heard him very clearly at halftime because he's a different player in this second half. Porter Roberts picks up his third personal, and you look at Ray Jackson go to the hole. Jackson with 20 points here in the ball game. A career high. And you know what? He's got it without jacking up ill-advised jumpers. He's got it by going to the basket and using that strength and that athletic ability that he possesses, he still has the four fouls, so he's going to go out for a little while and come back later. And he received a standing ovation from the student section. Ray Jackson replaced by Leon Durrance. Michigan's lead is 10, biggest of the afternoon for the Wolverines. Robinson looking to do some business. Scored and a foul. Oh, a sensational play from the weak side by Herb Dove getting high into the air for that putback. And Juwan Howard, I believe, picked up the foul. Well, here's Robinson working hard for his points. And Dove, who is reportedly the best leaper on the, on the Purdue team, as the 40-some-odd inch vert vertical leap, used it all on this play and smartly shot it while still in air with the contact. 
and the three-point opportunity. Joanne Howard's fourth personal foul, and Dove completes a three-point play, much needed by Gene Cady's Boilermakers, and Conzo Martin with four personal fouls, quickly up off the Boilermaker bench, comes back on, replacing Porter Roberts. That's our story, and the 5-14 left to go in the game. You know, it was four years ago when Purdue came to the state of Michigan trying to get a share of a Big Ten championship. Wayne, you remember that game. You did it. It was in East Lansing, and they lost to Michigan State. In a beautiful ball game. Yeah. One of the great games in Big Ten basketball history. Kings pass off the hand of Rose, or was it? Yes, it was. Apparently, Jalen thought Matt Waddell had tipped it last. Now Gene Cady orchestrates his troops. Just under five minutes to go for the game. Michigan's lead is seven. Purdue on the attack. Robinson knocked away by Rose. Stanbeck recovers. Robinson a quick shot for three. Ooh, how many guys can catch the ball on their heels and still get a three-pointer from that far out. <laughs> Tremendous. 30 for Glenn Robinson. Four points the lead for Michigan. King wants Howard on the block. Howard has there. He hasn't had it in a while, Juwan. Hasn't had any touches inside. Howard rotating down low. Michigan continues to work the perimeter. 10 to go on the shot clock. Howard from the outside. The versatility of Jawan Howard, so much of his offense down low on the blocks, but yes, he can move out to 15 feet and hit that shot. If you're Purdue, that's, that's the lesser of two evils. You give him that shot, but Howard is in such a groove right now, he's able to knock it down. Robinson stopped by Jalen Rose, who can't believe they called his fourth personal foul. Under four minutes to go for the game. Michigan's lead is six, and watch it again. It's a good call. Yeah, got him on the arm. I don't know what Jalen's yeah, upset really. about. Four personals on Jalen Rose again. Both teams are in the super bonus. Robinson with 30. But Jalen did that time, which was good. He got him so hard that he couldn't get the shot up for a three-point opportunity which is a little what you were talking about in the first half. You're going to foul somebody on a situation like that. Don't give them the field goal. Yeah. Robinson earns two more from 15 feet away. 32 for Robinson. Purdue still in it with 3.50 to go. While some people offer small cars for seemingly low prices, you don't get much. Michigan by four. And here is today's Pizza Hut delivery of the game. Well, we've seen this repeatedly. The cuts to the basket. Ray Jackson, ever present on the offensive glass. That was his fourth offensive rebound and put back in the second half. <laughs> Joan Howard tears his shirt off him. That's today's Pizza Hut delivery of the game. While we were heading off to that break, after the play had been concluded, Herb Dove was called for a technical foul. Now, watch Coach Katie's reaction here. He doesn't know what's happened either. And all of a sudden, my goodness, what's going on? Herb Dove is hit with a technical foul, apparently. And he can't believe it. Yeah, That's he says, what did you do? That's big, because now Michigan gets two free throws and the, and ball. the ball. With the clock winding down, 3.50 to go in the game. That's huge. I don't know what happened, but as a player on the floor, you must be able to control your emotions and not get yourself in situations like that with the game on the line. Herb Dove, just a sophomore out of Indianapolis. Jalen Rose trying to make the second. He has just 12 points here today. Make it 13, but of course, the other members of that Fab Four, Howard with 27, Jackson with 21 points, King with 14. All four members of the Fab Four are averaging double figures this season for Michigan. Michigan basketball. Michigan on the attack, leading by five. If Purdue can get out of this giving up just one point, that on that technical by Rose a moment ago, then they have to consider themselves extremely fortunate. 
Juwan Howard on the block. Good cut on the play by King Denied down low. If Purdue goes quickly, they got a man advantage. King's late getting back. Robinson didn't realize it. He cranks it for three. Ray Jackson hey, the rebound. They got Howard Long if they throw it. They don't throw it. Michigan opting to use some shot, use some shot clock. Howard ran out on the shot and was wide open down the down, down court. Jalen Rose. Nice scoop. King. King making up for the layup he missed a moment ago. Another offensive rebound for Michigan. Seven point lead now for the Wolverines. Under three minutes to go. Foster. Robinson in the block. Dribbled it off his foot. A quick shot by Glenn Robinson in a, basically an unforced error on the block. In the last two Purdue possessions has really put Gene Cady and the Boilermakers behind the eight ball. Well, for Robinson, he's had two superhuman first halves against Michigan. But he's had two nightmarish second halves. Robinson picks up his fourth. The second half for Glenn Robinson, 10 points. But he had 22 at halftime. 10 points, but he has taken quite a few shots here in the second half to get that. He has had to work for his points. A lot harder here than he did earlier. But again, what uh, Michigan wanted was to force Glenn Robinson to, as they did at West Lafayette last month, take 29 or 30 shots to get his 30 sub points. Don't allow the offense to come easy. Ray Jackson, 5 of 5 from the field of the second half. One out of two at the free throw line of the second half for Jackson. You realize? Look at the foul situation. Wow. Keep Nine adding guys. names to that. We're going to run out of screen. Yeah, fours are wild. You realize that if, if this holds up and if Michigan wins, Robinson will have scored over 30 every time against Michigan, but will have no victories to show for it. And, of course, Michigan, since the Fab Five, now the Fab Four arrived on campus, they have yet to win a Big Ten championship, although they made two Final Fours. Three for Waddell, serving notice that Purdue is not out of this game yet. They keep coming back, and they're in good shape because down five, that's only two possessions. But they got to have some defense right now. We're approaching the two-minute mark. Seven three-point field goals in this second half by Purdue. Michigan on the attack. Howard holding the ball. Where's the five-second? There's it closely guarded. And they start the five-second count before Howard puts it on the floor. Shot clock winding down, under 10. King manufactured. Well, if you're Michigan, that's the way you like to do it. You run that clock down, you take that valuable time away from Purdue, and you still score. Martin answering for three, no. Ian Stanback, Waddell the tray, bury it. Gene Kenny wants a timeout real quick, he doesn't get it. Under two minutes to go for the game. Michigan's lead is four. And they spread the floor a bit. Purdue, this time they must be able to play solid defense and finish the deal with the defensive rebound. Look at that shot. Purdue basketball with a minute straight up to go. Now Gene can get his timeout, will he? Now, of course, from here on in, the clock stops after each field goal. Steve Fisher wondering how is this still a ball game? This team has played well here in the second half. They've had at times a 9-point, 10-point lead. Robinson scored and a foul, and Purdue is in it. Glenn Robinson with 34. I think he lulled Michigan to sleep. They were looking for the jumper. He turned down the jumper and made a strong move to the basket. And there was no help side defense. The only help side defense came from behind. But you're not going to strip him from behind. He's just too strong. Second personal on Jimmy King. We've got a break. 49.2 seconds to go. And it's very much a game. 
Purdue Boilermakers, who trailed on a couple of occasions by as many as 10 points in the second half. Yet here they are with Glenn Robinson heading to the free throw line, and they trail by just two. Michigan, on the other hand, was down by 15 in the first half of play, cut the deficit to two at halftime, and then got off to the quick start in the second half. Been an outstanding ball game and a game fitting of the Big Ten Championship. Today's Big Ten Conference basketball has been brought to you by Pizza Hut. By the Ford Motor Company. By Counter and Thymate. And by MCI. If you're Gene Cady and the Purdue Boilermakers, you gotta like having Glenn Robinson. This is your All-America. This is the man who's trying to become the first Purdue Boilermaker to be Player of the Year nationally since John Wooden, way back in the 30s. Yeah, that John Wooden. You know what? Now Purdue, that sequence right there allows them to be able to play solid defense without fouling. They can play the entire 35 seconds worth of defense, but they've got to be able to get a defensive rebound. Then they have the last chance to win this game. Under a minute to go, Dugan five, Jalen Rose, four, three. Jackson chasing it down. Now Purdue will have to foul because there's no shot clock. They could not finish the deal. They could not get the defensive rebound. King to Rose. Rose wants it because he wants to be the one to get fouled. 14 seconds to go. Near turnover. Woo. Time out. Boilermakers, it'll be Purdue ball. That pass getting away from a lunging Jimmy King. And Purdue has a chance to win with 10.5 seconds to go. We'll be back. Because many places in the world come with crowbars. Five seconds to go. Michigan's lead is one. It'll be Purdue basketball. Executive producer, Raycom Sports, is Peter Rolf. Senior coordinating producer, Johnny Tyus. Michael Vetter is our producer here in Michigan. Our director, Brian Seif. And the technical director, Byron Vivian. And congratulations to all those folks for helping us enjoy this afternoon. Take a look at what's left here. Neither team with a foul to give. Two timeouts left for each. Possession arrow in favor of Purdue, and that could be very important. Well, if you're Gene Kitty, you would have loved to have been able to hold on to that big lead. But you really can't ask for any more than this on the road in a Big Ten game. You're giving yourself a chance to win. They have that chance now. Look for them to try and go through Robinson, obviously. But Waddell and Martin, two players that are available if Robinson's cut off. For the second time in five years, Purdue has come to Michigan seeking a Big Ten championship. This won't clinch anything, but it could go a long way to giving Purdue a Big Ten title. Conzo Martin has to signal for a timeout. They couldn't get it in in time. Another timeout. Purdue has one timeout remaining. Michigan has two. And we will step away once again. The drama continues at Chrysler Arena, and we'll be back. So, what are we doing today? I'd like to go buy some. It has been a vocal crowd here in Michigan. Sometimes Chrysler Arena can be a little quiet, but not today. Don't forget, coming up one more week of regular season Big Ten action on Raycom. I'll be in Evanston, Illinois, Northwestern, taking on Michigan, these same Wolverines. And then it'll be followed by either Wisconsin and Indiana or Illinois and Purdue. Check your local listings on many of these Raycom stations. Michigan's got to put intense pressure on that out-of-bounds pass, but they can't break down off the ball by trying to gamble and leaving someone an open track to the basket. What are you looking for if you're Purdue? You got to put it in number 13's hands here? I think it should go through his hands and you go off his decision. He can get it for himself, but if he's double or triple team, then the pressure's on, on Robinson to find the open man. Michigan now will call a timeout. Michigan takes time and will reset the defense. Again, still 10. 0.5 seconds remaining to be played. Michigan leads by one. We now pause for a word from your local station. This is the Raycom Network. Purdue. 
taking a timeout. Michigan takes a timeout as well. Trying to, Steve Fisher here obviously trying to set his defense, right? He's trying to set his defense, and I think he's cautioning his guys. Let's not take any unnecessary gambles. For Purdue, it's a tough inbound pass from that sideline. I think they're going to have to make more than just one player available to Conzo Martin, who's going to try to inbound. Now Michigan changes strategy. Rather than defend the inbound, they're defending out of the floor. Conzo Martin, the inbound to Glenn Robinson. Robinson on the spin. He's got it! Oh, you know what? That's a tough, tough shot. And he had the pressure of Jalen Rose slapping at the basketball. Unbelievable. Glenn Robinson, a big time play from the biggest time player in the Big Ten Conference. 37 for Glenn Robinson. He gives Purdue a one point lead with six and a half seconds to go. Today, one. Wayne Larrabee, Greg Kelser, that's our story now. Purdue by one with 6.5 seconds remaining. Boilermakers do have one timeout left. They've got the one timeout, but going back to that play a moment ago, it was sensational. Robinson, he says, hey, guys, if you can't get it in, I'll come and get it. He got it at half court, made his move down the lane, intense defense pressure from Jalen Rose. He still was able to elevate and put it down. That was large. Despite two Final Four appearances by Michigan in the last two years. The Fab Five, now the Fab Four, has failed to win a Big Ten or regular season championship. And they've got some championship on the line now. Rose, Duke and Fife to win it. No! The shot by Rose. Purdue has won. Purdue. Takes the lead in the Big Ten race down the stretch by a half game over Michigan. Look at Gene Cady head off the floor here at Chrysler Arena. The Portermakers 95, the Wolverines 94 for Rick, Greg Kelser. Wayne Larrabee saying so long from Michigan. This has been a copyrighted presentation of the Big Ten Conference Incorporated. on the Fox. That's new from Mellencamp. Baby, please. You know, we don't just say that all the time either. Hi, and welcome to the show. I'm Vince Gelini. I'm Bob Lorenz. He's right. It's right from right here. Right from here. Yeah, we mean that. Hey, we're glad you're here. We are highlight <laughs> intensive on this show, and we want to start in Ann Arbor, Michigan, where things reach the boiling point today in the Big Ten. I'll tell you what, Glenn Robinson is called the best player in the country by many people. He played that way today. Great players make big plays in big games, period. Big plays, big games. Sounds like a job for the big dog. With the game on the line at Michigan, everyone in the free world knew Purdue's Glenn Robinson was going to take the shot. He still made it. And the Boilermakers take the game, the Big Ten lead, and perhaps a top seed for the upcoming NCAA tournament. We head to Chrysler Arena right now. Second half, Jalen Rose inside of Juwan Howard, who had a nice game with 27 and a 10-point Michigan lead at that point. Easy, Gene. But Glenn Robinson would bring Purdue back, draining the three, and then driving to the hoop and the foul, 94-93. Michigan has a one-point lead. 14 seconds ago, Michigan by one. They're looking for a foul. No one was looking for that. They turned the basketball over with 10.5 to go, and that opened the door for Glenn Robinson. He takes the pass, dribbles, spins, and hits the shot over Jalen Rose to put Purdue up 95-94. Michigan has a final crack. Dugan Fife comes up with this effort. It's short off the iron. The follow is also no good. And Purdue can celebrate a tough, hard-fought win, 95-94 at Michigan. Glenn Robinson, 37 points. And talking about his game winner, Robinson said, I knew Jalen was going to guard me, and I felt I could bogart him all the way to the hole. <laughs> Purdue snaps a four-game losing streak to Michigan, assumes a half-game lead over the Wolverines in the conference. And Gene Cady was seen smiling after this game. It's one of those things where you have a team of good character, and I've said all year this is the best team we've had since I've been at Purdue from top to bottom, from the first man to the whatever the 15th man is uh, as far as character. So they just never gave up, and they kept hanging in there. And with the three-pointers nowadays, that's the way it is. 
Meanwhile, Indiana stumbled at Bob Knight's alma mater, Ohio State. All Indiana in the first half. Allen Henderson comes up with a block, and then on the fast break, he Henderson will score. Will Hoosiers up by 18, 33, and 15. But Ohio State, <laughs> second half, Jamie Skelton. Great pass to Lawrence Funderburk, who has a little history with Bob Knight. 60 to 53, Indiana. Then Skelton again to Funderburk. Layup and the foul just under a minute and a half left. Funderburk had 25 in the game. Ohio State led by eight there, and Bob Knight's Hoosiers went without a field goal for over 10 minutes in the second half. It just killed them. Indiana needed overtime to beat the Buckeyes in Bloomington, but slip at St. John Arena. The Hoosiers, as we said, an 18-point first-half lead loss. They were done in by that second-half dry spell, and this against an Ohio State team that had lost 8 of 10. And remember, no Big Ten tournament. Indiana drops a game and a half back in the standings. Purdue up by a half game over Michigan. The Boilermakers finish the regular season home against Illinois. The Wolverines have two remaining, home to Penn State, then Northwestern on the road. Well, 14th Frank UCLA got a break from the rigor. Maybe a smile on the way, Michael. Michigan gave Purdue its only home loss this season. The Boilermakers, with the stakes much higher, had a chance to avenge that defeat. Purdue playing at Chrysler Arena, number three, hosting number nine. Boilermakers in Michigan. Purdue needed a big game from Mr. Robinson, and they got one. Unstoppable here from the corner. Two defenders on him. He's fouled. Still makes the basket. Purdue leading by as many as 15. He had 22 in the first half. Jalen Rose gets it to Jawan Howard. The Wolverines go on a 17-4 run. Second half, Rose the miss. Ray Jackson the putback. He had a career-high 22. The Wolverines had a 10-point lead. Purdue went to Matt Waddell, fires up the three. Boilermakers rally to get within four. Under a minute to play, Robinson goes baseline. Another foul, another hoop. Purdue within one. Then Michigan up one, the shot clock off. Jalen Rose throws it away, so they turn it over. They were stunned at Ann Arbor. Purdue, no debate who to go to here. You need the basket to win. Glenn Robinson gets it. Two men on him, drives through. Maybe walk, but gets it to go. 37 points for him. Purdue up one. Michigan still with one last chance. Dugan Fife going to try for the three. And then even on the rebound, Rose has a chance, and that doesn't go. And Purdue hangs on to win it. By one, 95-94, Michigan Majors, four of 23 point shots. Jalen Rose, overall, four of 17 from the field, had just 13 points. Indiana playing at Ohio State. Bob Knight being Bob Knight. Pat Grant kicks it out to Damon Bailey, who had 16 in the game. He hits the three ball from the corner pocket. The Hoosiers led by 18 over the Buckeyes. But former Hoosier, Lawrence Funderburg, still something to prove against Bob Knight in Indiana every time he faces him. The basket and he's fouled. The Buckeyes get to within six at halftime, but they changed nets for the second half, and Bob Knight didn't like that. Jamie Skelton gets it to Funderburg for the monster jam and then a big chill for Indiana. Brian Evans couldn't hit. Bailey couldn't hit. Allen Henderson couldn't hit. They went scoreless for 11 minutes. Indiana 0 for 9 in the field goal department and Funderburg gets some more. 25 points for him. The Hoosiers down three. Seven seconds remaining. Bailey going to try to try for the three and it doesn't go for the tie. And then they got a little cranky underneath. A major moment for the Buckeyes as they pull off the upset, making up that 18-point deficit. Ohio State, though, still assured of its first losing season since 76-77. So the Indiana loss on the Purdue win helps the Boilermakers in the Big Ten. They have a half-game edge over Michigan. Purdue's last Big Ten game is home against Illinois. Michigan playing at Penn State and then hosting Northwestern. Six teams from the